Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and we return to the Lando Calrissian Adventures for Book 2 in 1983. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. The Lando Calrissian Adventures these days is more often found in some omnibus form. There's a couple different printings. This is the one from 1994 that has all three books in it by L. Neil Smith. We've already looked at Book 1. Now we look at September of 1983's Book 2, Lando Calrissian and the Flame Wind of Oceon. This is actually my favorite cover of these. It's a really kind of a, a dashing shot there of Lando kind of turned to the side, blasting away here. Turns out the blaster is going to get him into quite a bit of trouble, or his, his stingray basically type thing is going to get him into quite a bit of trouble this time around. Basically, we are back in a situation where Lando's going to be screwed over into carrying out someone else's dirty work, basically, or at least that's what he's supposed to be doing. Turns out that after things worked out at the end of Mindhop of Sheru, he had some life crystals from that mission that he then sold, had enough money to try to go into legitimate business, but things just aren't working out. Every time he turns around, something is going wrong. It's as if someone's working against him, Roker Gepta. It's as if someone's working against him, Roker freaking Gepta from the last book. Um, so, he winds up with Vuvi Ra, his droid companion, his weird sort of multi-limbed squid-like companion who we don't know much about at the time he's supposed to go to this nice asteroid belt type area do this high stakes sabat game and everything they wind up having an explosion on the ship once and then they find another explosive that doesn't go off before goofy rock can turn it off and basically it seems as though someone is out to kill him to kill lando and he winds up finding that his ship the millennium falcon right because this is that era in which he owns it not han yet uh, ship is on fire. Oh, crap. Except he goes to see where the ship is on fire, only to turn out it's not. He's been set up, and he's attacked from behind. When he's attacked from behind, he takes out his weapon called the Sting Beam and blasts the assailant. And, whew, he thinks, okay, that's right. Everything's fine. What have we here? It looks like a corpse. Um, but he says, it's self-defense. I'm okay. So he goes and reports this to the local authorities. Problem is that the local authorities point out, well, yeah, um, problem. Yeah, self-defense is okay for killing someone, but you got a weapon. And those weapons, they're illegal on the planet. You, my friend, just got yourself set up with a death sentence for carrying a restricted weapon. However, of course, he has a way out of this. You do something for me, I'll do something for you. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Come on, Lando, what do you say? As if he has much of a choice. He basically tells Lando that there's this other guy in the system, guy by the name of Bohua Mutda. We'll just call him Mutda from here on out. And Mutda always has an illegal substance called Lasai brought into him during what's called the Flame Wind of Oceon. It's this big uh, astronomical event and everything, but it's a time in which there's restrictions on travel in space within the system. And by bringing in this Lasai, whether it's legal or not, they're breaking those regulations. So they want to nail them on that, but also nail them for Lasai itself. And despite the danger, they say, well, Lando, you're going to be the one to take on this assignment. He gets his Dolef, that is the administrator that he kind of got set up by, right? Saying, hey, come on in for the card game and such. And then he got set up to wind up having to be the errand boy for this guy. Uh, he has a peacekeeper type of assistant uh, whose job it is to essentially be uh, the law enforcement officer who's supposed to bust Mutda, but he needs a way to get there, he needs someone to back him up, etc., etc., and that's going to be Lando. This peacekeeper's name is Basi Voba, V-O-B-A-H. So, Mutda and Voba, lots of ah kind of sounds here at the end of the story, or here at the end of the names in the story. So, of course, Lando's kind of stuck, he has no choice, he and Vufi Ra go, they go and meet with Mutda, and they've also been tasked with bringing along this Imperial Narcotics agent. This is the guy who's going to be there to also, again, help make the bust on Mutda here. You know, can't have the illegal smuggling or the illegal uh, shipments going on during the flame wind, etc., etc. Turns out this is actually all a plot by Roker Gepta to kill Lando, to get revenge. He set up all this stuff, going all the way back to, hey, come on down for the Sabacc tournament in order to wipe Lando out. In fact, he's been the one who's been manipulating the markets around where Lando has been trying to do his legitimate business so that Lando had no choice but to lean more toward going back into his older profession of uh, basically being the gambler and the scoundrel type of figure. So Voba and this agent named, it's Weiwa Fibot, 
Fibot, maybe Fibo, but B-O-T. Uh, Fibot and Voba go in there to arrest Mutda. Except then Fibot blasts Voba and kills him. And it turns out that they were in league together. Mutda, the guy who's getting the drugs, and this supposed Imperial narcotics agent were working together. But then Mutda shoots and kills Fibot, right? Double cross, then another double cross, multiple double crosses. Turns out, though, that uh, Mutda is actually not Mutda. Mutda is Roker Gepta. He sort of takes a force illusion off, and it's Roker Gepta there ready to punish Lando. So Roker Gepta starts messing with Lando's mind, and it turns out that the day is saved by an unlikely source. There were these pirates that they ran into throughout part of their adventure, and these pirates wind up attacking again. They don't quite know why yet. They wind up attacking again, and that attack gives Lando a chance to escape, only for them to wind up running into one of the pirates and having to sort of tie him up, kind of uh, beat him down to make sure that they can't, you know, kill Lando. Turns out it's not Lando they're actually after, and this wasn't a random attack. They're after Vufi Ra, the droid, which this pirate is referring to as the destroyer of his world. Opens up a lot of big questions as to just who and what is Vufi Ra. Remember, Lando didn't know this droid until the last story. Lando Carissa in the mind harp of Sheru. So we know little to nothing about this droid character, and now we're getting this hint that maybe there's something more to him than we've seen before. So, it's an interesting tale, another quick little adventure story. The broader scope of things, not that important in the broader EU, but it gives us more about Vufi Ra, more hints as to what exactly he is and where he is from and so forth. And, of course, it's continuing on with Roker Gepto wanting revenge. Kind of like what we saw with uh, Galandro back in the Han Solo book, except Galandro only wound up showing up in two of them. Now we have Roker Gepta showing up. He's going to show up in all three as a way of connecting the storyline together within this trilogy. It makes it feel much more like a trilogy than the Han Solo books, even though, again, this is three sort of separate adventures that happen to have these ties that link them together. So, question, of course, we always ask is, is this an essential read? And again, I would say no. Lando Calrissian Adventures overall are not essential reads, not to understand the background of Lando Calrissian or anything else, really. I mean, learning about Vufi Ra is cool, learning about Roker Gepta and the Sorcerers of Tund is cool, but they're not something that has a great big impact on the broader EU so much as they just sort of set some seeds for later embellishment in the EU. So not an essential read yet again. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the readers.